guys, you're chilling with Kerry from Fine Art Africa. Today we are launching Back Chat, our video podcast series, and we are starting off with Rochelle Bomberg, a fine art master from Cape Town. We're really looking forward to getting the behind the scenes of the artistic process, and we hope to bring you many, many more exciting interviews to come. So do hit subscribe, follow us on social media, and check out our website for more. Hi, Rochelle. It's so nice to have you here with us at Fine Art Africa for our first podcast series. Um, so I'm really excited to have you as our first feature artist. Um, and I'm really interested in getting into all of your underneath what's going on in the artist's mind. How does it feel to be in the middle of creating these immensely powerful pieces that, you know, just feel so much more than they just feel like something more. They feel like you're connecting with something really great. Um, so I'm fascinated by the process of, of what that all feels like. Um, and I think a lot of our audience will be as well. So before we kind of get into the specific questions and going through different works, for anyone who doesn't know about you or, or has seen only a few of your works, could you just let us know a little bit about how you see yourself as an artist, some of the broad themes that come up for you, um, any sort of introductory piece? Okay, well, first of all, thank you, and it's good to be here. Um, right. Well, they are multifaceted. I cover many topics, many areas, but in my own particular peculiar genre, which I developed over decades. Yeah. Or actually, Strangely enough, um, it, they began, I think my genre or a particular energy came early, at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's developed over time mm -hmm. and using the different subjects mm -hmm. um, that calls for a different way of approach. But nevertheless, I would say that the signature of the way I use the brush, the energies and so on, that remains consistent. Although you, you would probably need to understand or know the work to be able to say, ah, oh, yeah, now I see that, oh, I've got that. Mm, mm, mm. It's so interesting to me um, how your, the, the whole philosophy that you have around your work really relates to how you actually use the technique of the different ways in which you create the art um, and you know, brush strokes and, and things like that. It's just very fascinating for me to, to learn a little bit more about and spending some time with you. Um, but that kind of leads me on to my next question, which is, which is to ask a little bit about that moment of inspiration or that moment when you choose to, to work with the subject. Um, does that kind of hit you all at once or do you go searching for it? What's the process? Okay. Well, it depends on which uh, time frame you're talking about. If we're going back 40 plus years, it would have been a different approach and those works are out there and exist somewhere. Um, over, the, over the years, uh, my approach for inspiration changed. So, okay, if we go right back to the very, very beginning, um, it was the hippie era or coming, just coming out of the hippie era. Um, I've been brought up in the UK, in London. So it's a very, very unique energy. It was the Beatles. It was et cetera, et cetera, Chelsea, uh, King's Road and so on and so forth. Um, so I read a lot, um, but it was mainly um, that type of transcendental uh, literature. Um, oh, to find the names of the top of my head at this point. Uh, anyway, some of the great Indian philosophers and so on. Um, and it started to trigger something. And in fact, uh, the one that really triggered something in me was Carlo Gibran. Okay. I'm sure, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's pretty well known. And um, yeah, that, that, I think it was that that kick-started uh, because originally I had wanted to be um, on the stage dancing. <laughs> and suddenly, although at arts, at school, I was being pushed to go to art school in the UK, okay. but I wanted to get out into the world. So... Yeah. Okay, so to try and keep on track and answer your question, um, it started off by being a little bit more transcendental, you know, hippie, meditation, that sort of thing. 
And somehow or other, and I don't quite remember how it happened, but I started painting. And okay, the, the, first, the first few were just little semi copies of Brock or, or something like that. And, but then I knew I wanted to go to art school. Then I started to journey forward. And before I knew it, I was basically with, with two meter canvases, spray cans, uh, <laughs> stitching canvas, <laughs> doing all sorts of things. <laughs> because I went to art school and they, of course, triggered a whole lot of um, research. We were, we were uh, encouraged to do a conceptual art. Mm -hmm. So that was most, that was quite uh, uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So sl slowly or not so slowly, mm -hmm. the first initial, ah, Khalil Gibran and all that beautiful poetic was sort of, drifted away and I started to develop other aspects of thinking, processing and so on. So those were uh, early works. They were, as I say, they were huge, they were spray painted. And along with the reading that I had continued to do, I started to read, um, I would sort of layman's uh, quantum physics. Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> You know, sort of dancing woolly masters, uh, an easy version of Einstein, <laughs> something like that. But nevertheless, enough to trigger. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to the early thoughts and early readings and you and the spiritual, I hate to use that word, and I don't even like using transcendental actually, because it's all become rather cliche. Mm -hmm. But something was triggered, and I knew in my inner self that there was more to existence mm -hmm. than whatever, you know, the mediocre, put it that way. And which I had, always, had known all the, all the way through, but now I was able to, I had a, a format in which I could express it um, more so than even dance, mm -hmm. which has its own a, a different energy, rhythm, uh, so on. So um, I, I think I've kind of gone off uh, your your question, but what I <laughs> but basically that's where it started. But then I started to get involved with other um, issues. Uh, we went through uh, marriage, children. Uh, there was a need to express birth yeah. yes. and so on. But within the context of creating always something that, in some way tripped over the edge of just being a literal representation. Yeah. Yeah. So I moved away from the pure abstracts mm -hmm. and I started to bring out the more some things that were more literal. Mm -hmm. um, then, yeah, so, so the issues of female liberation, which I had grown up with, mm -hmm. but didn't find here in South Africa, because I'd come to South Africa at that point, um, they start, those, those images started to conjure into my mind. And because I'd been quite heavily influenced by the art that I'd been brought up with in the UK mm -hmm. and in London, having gone through the museums and so on as a very young child, um, those images, which became a part of me as a child, mm -hmm. became in some ways an influence mm -hmm. on, on the work. So some of the more figurative works would reflect those issues. Does that explain anything? <laughs> so much. I mean, honestly, now my mind is rolling with so many different directions. I'm like, which one are we going on? <laughs> Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing. I actually did study metaphysics briefly, and I totally resonate with what you're saying there between, you know, the kind of looser terms of, you know, things like spiritual or um, or transcendental, as you say, but 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 with a very yeah, taking metaphysics into account, it all becomes a lot more mysterious and and intriguing and, and layered. Yes, well, and the word mystery um, being quite pertinent, most pertinent, because I think that's, the for me, the daily key um, out of the mediocre of the things that I had to sort out this morning, which you know about, and so on. <laughs> Uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and what is, what is masks as well, and COVID and so on. <laughs> but nevertheless, the mystery is the, is the um, key. Um, I don't know whether I should bring it in at this point, but I have also studied a little bit 
and I mean there is it's huge 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 mm -hmm. of Kabbalah and I come from a, a Jewish background mm -hmm. and one of the terms used is hidden so but I, I won't get into anything too religious now because then I'm going to start <laughs> stepping on toes <laughs> and say well move away from that quickly <laughs> Maybe we can we can get into that at some other some other stage and and do something. Things are all part and parcel of, yeah. of you know what. Uh, yeah. Well, I love the idea of mystery being a part of what you of what you do and kind of what what spurs you on and keeps you going. And I think you know when you look at your pieces, I think that's such a beautiful way of almost understanding some of the works, at least from a you know very amateurish, just kind of viewing pleasure perspective. Um, it does speak to. The works to me at the very least do speak to the mystery and and the metaphysical and the transcendental and there's like this massive undertone of that happening um of this being you know pushing the boundaries of the physical and, and as you said before extending beyond the physical which is which is very beautiful um and then again leads us to to this kind of roll-on question from that which would be as the artist as the one creating these you, you know incredibly powerful and awe-inspiring works What's the sort of most intense point in the process? What can you tell us about the intensity of creation? <laughs> you mean after the after the days and days of tedious layering? <laughs> you see, none of us think of that. We all think quite dramatic and quite, you know, profound. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, uh, okay. Um, so actually going back to a, a previous question, you asked me what inspires me. So I, I would, in the initial stages, not have any preconceived idea. Okay. But then over the years, I would actually take something that was actually pressingly an issue and adapt and so on. Um, so if I have, I mean, in those days, basically, you could go back to say, I'll make a mark or make a layer and then watch something emerge from that. Mm whatever, an abstract shape, something that would trigger something. Um, and there are works that I could show you that, that would explain that. Um, and then I, I became more involved with the, and that was kind of an interesting journey because I was very young. I didn't really know what, you know, because I'm in a way, even though I went to art school, in a way I'm self-taught. Mm. My, my, my uh, technique is basically something I've developed myself. Um, it's actually not, although to look at the paintings, one would say, oh, they're classical. Yeah. But classical painting per se is, is not done in this way, or wasn't done in this way. It, it's a different process. So basically, I will cover the entire canvas in one go. Paint will dry, go in again. Paint will dry, go in again. And um, it can be quite tedious, but then um, and so if I'm heading towards an image that I think I have, I've made a few sketches, um, I will probably after about seven or eight layers start to get it. It'll start to say, ah, now you're talking to me. Now you've got it, Bomberg. <laughs> but I'm not there yet. So, so you kind of almost wait for the canvas to speak to you. That's, that's your process. Yeah. That's the thing because it is a two-way process. It, you know, if I if I just take a sketch and then just go, blah, 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 then I'd just be copying a sketch or whatever. So no, it, it's basically a, it does develop, and maybe that's an interesting part. Mm -hmm. But it's also very frustrating because there's a lot of balance that is involved in what I do. You know, I, the canvas is balanced. There's a classical composition to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's there's quite so the moment. So you asked me which was the moment. I would say the moment is after about eight. Let's say eight layers got. You know, I don't know how many. You've got it. It's got it. It's there. <laughs> now there's still probably another ten layers to go, if not more. And I may even put the work away. You know, because there's a two days drying in between yeah. usually at least. Um, and then I might put it to one side, or I then I start forming a relationship. Okay. And then I will pop in, have a look, mm, go Spend off and do time. a dance class, you know, mull over it. And, and it's been known to come into my bedroom with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I've carted it. And I've actually, and I've slept with it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love that. <laughs> no, not literally. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> And I, I've actually sort of, you know, so that's been, that's been quite, uh, you know, that's, I don't do that often, but, you know, sometimes it's necessary when I can't really resolve it fully. It's there, but it's not there. Mm. So it's quite, it's quite frustrating, but there is a point where I remember showing you the work the other day and I've, I've got there. Now I need to refine certain areas, but it's there. I know that there's some energy that's working through that whole surface that is actually singing. Okay. Colors are right. Everything's right. So I can say, I, I know I've got you now. Oh, that must be such a such a satisfying moment. Yeah. Pat on the back. <laughs> That's great. So 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 in terms of masquerade, which is the the piece behind you, if I'm correct, um, that piece you say has been very popular and 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 very enjoyed, but you've chosen to keep that one. So so what is the the difference or what is the deciding factor if there is any between a work that you choose to keep and one you you let go of <laughs> maybe it's because it's in the middle of the main uh, room in the museum <laughs> <laughs> i don't know um look it's a particularly profound work for me um, you know, that's partly a, what I just said was partly Joe. Might be, I don't know to what degree it might be true, but it, it is a very profound work because um, in it I tackle in an almost humorous way mm -hmm. the, um, the ridiculousness of how I see mankind <laughs> and our folly. So it, it actually, funnily enough, it originally started off as a um, love's funeral and there was no masks mm -hmm. and um, it was stuck away and I moved and this and that and it was uh, downstairs and uh, my daughter came because she's been a great muse to me over the years and we were looking at a few works and she said mom this isn't this isn't right this you know this this and I said mm, yeah okay um, because love's funeral you know the disappointment of the one's loves mm -hmm. uh, romances and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. and therefore the flowers and the two figures upside down because people have often said why are the figures upside down I said no they're not upside down they are in a coffin <laughs> so that's why <laughs> together <laughs> but then it flashed and I don't know where it came from were the masks mm -hmm. and that turned it completely on its head or rather it didn't turn it on its head it actually stayed upside down <laughs> but that <laughs> that actually for me was you know that tipped it over the over the scales from it, it's to something almost I don't even know what word to use it's quirky uh, punchy mm. yeah. so I think yeah, yeah. it's uh, you know, the, the masks just do it for me they, they make that because just two figures lying, you know, wouldn't do it in the same way. Those masks are really stating my opinion mm. or my, my uh, well, it's not even opinion, it, well, my, my thoughts on how mankind, mm. mankind's folly. Mm. Mm. Um, but, but talking about the kind of, you know, humans, the, the folly of mankind, or at least um, humanity's sort of rougher edges, um, the work Revenge and, and Resurrection that, we, that we've got in the gallery at the moment is quite a dark work, um, but I found it quite mysterious when I looked at it and, and I couldn't really unpack it in terms of exactly where you were going. So I was wondering if you could chat a bit about that work and sort of a little bit about how, you, how, how the dark side of humanity comes into your work and, and, and I suppose a little bit about your personal kind of journey with coming to terms of, with what humanity often presents us with. Mm -hmm. Well, that particular piece, um, I think that was fairly planned. But again, when I say something is planned, it's never planned to that degree. The, you, but the idea was the um, the peacock, because there's a peacock. I don't know if you noticed. There's a pe and the sword, which is being held, if I can recall correctly, upside down. Mm -hmm. So the hand is holding the, I can't remember the painting myself, but anyway, it's holding the blade. Yes, yes. So the hand and is towards the bottom. Yeah, and it's holding the blade. I can't quite remember the exact painting, but basically what it was saying, it was, 
it was the female because the peacock is the male so it was my revenge after various things that have happened to me this is purely on a male female level okay yes and then i won't go now because of course there's always another level which is patriarchal societies mm -hmm. um, and so on but this was on a personal level but yes of course it, it's much broader than that mm -hmm. and therefore the peacock is being <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> done in <laughs> <laughs> so that that's basically and and therefore that whole male um, chauvinistic mm. uh, which i fought against mm. or you know well it, it was part of my upbringing being london mm. 60s exactly um but that, that does kind of take us to the last picture in, in a sort of semi-flow type of way. Um, the last painting I, I wanted to touch on a little is also from the exhibition, um, Actualization. And when I looked at it, I, you know, the term actualization and then having a, a very sort of, in, in a lot of your other works, you, there isn't one figure so much. That's quite a central part of the piece. Um, whereas this, you know, there's very much one woman in the you know, center of the portrait kind of looking out. Um, and I was wondering if there is any sort of self-portrait whispers going on in that or or where what is the story of the work? No, whispers, self-portrait whispers, whispers, yes. Um, and also because I've had um, a, a penchant for uh, the pre-Raphaelite. Um, I love the pre-Raphaelite paintings. And in fact, their, their whole era was very interesting. In many ways, they, they researched um, the dominated woman, the, the witch, mm. um, the sorceress, etc., etc. So, so that's where um, you know some of those classical and in that particular work that you speak of, um, that look is is part of that. But basically, it's also uh, uh, on based on Jung's uh, concept of uh, self actualization and why I placed her there in that particular pose with her hand is a grounding that has to occur. It's not just wafting away self-actualization. Um, <laughs> it's much more, you know, it's more grounded than that. There is there, there's an inner strength in that uh, self-actualization. But of course, self-actualizing isn't something you say, oh, I think I'm going to self-actualize today. <laughs> Can you imagine? If only it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so um yeah and then at the other side i should say yes my mommy always used to say to me we shall say yes where does this yarn come from <laughs> in south africa a long time. um so the flowers or that suggestion of flowers on the other side of her and there's a bit of a shift there there's a spatial shift because you know in most of the works there's always a spatial shift the shifting spatial moments which creates that mysticism which helps to create besides the layers besides the way light penetrates through the surface to the white canvas beneath through several it's almost like through pieces of glass mm. they, they come through so yeah so the the flowers very roughly placed because there's the hand there's the strong woman but then there's these flowers and that's that moment i'm saying mm, mm. in order to get to that moment you you, you need that inner in a knowledge that inner self-realization that grounding almost that um that that you know what you're saying about self-actualization and again i've sort of seen you talk about it with your work and, and with your dancing. Um, the role of discipline, I think, a lot of the time is something that is perhaps missed in understanding what it means to work with art, what it means to be a fine artist, and, and fine art particularly, um, I think discipline is, is a key role. So it's interesting that, that the actualization, you, you kind of touch on a similar theme. Indeed, indeed. In fact, discipline is very much um, the, the path to the inroad, to, to, to all of it, whether it be painting, whether it be dancing, whether it be um, doing the inner work mm. oneself, it's discipline. It doesn't just, it doesn't just happen as we, yeah. as we yeah, mm. unfortunately. I mean, look, for some, maybe it does. They could just maybe wake up and make a prayer and it's all fine, but. <laughs> oh, 
somewhere weird. Well, they are the lucky ones, the few and far between, I think. Um, I did, so just for two ending questions, um, kind of bringing it back to the South African context and, and of course, the, the pandemic that we're currently all shifting our way through. Um, what is the role of, or, or what is your relationship with, or, or talk to us at least broadly a little bit about hope during these times, I think particularly in the art world. Um, I know you've said quite a few things about it being quite difficult to find hope or, or you are in a space where hope is, is something that you, that is coming up. Look, um, there is no doubt <laughs> need to be a rocket scientist to work out that mankind is going through a, a terrible time, a, a huge, I mean, it's, it's basically a war. Mm that you know, we're facing and um, of, of sorts. Mm. Um, and the world itself, because of that, you know, the, 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 the repercussions that we all know are happening now and going to be even worse. I mean, it's very, very frightening. So it, economically um, and, and so on. So um, yes, I, I hope, and uh, maybe you can help me here. Uh, <laughs> look, from the art point of view, I could put it out there and say, in fact, a friend of mine, all right, I'll, I'll approach it this way. A friend of mine said to me a few, um, a couple of months ago, maybe now people will really get your work. Because it's not that they haven't all, you know, there obviously have been people that get it and are moved by it and so on. But he said, maybe they are, maybe your work now has more, that, so this is from a personal point of view, um, has more uh, resonance now, uh, meaning in, in this particular chaos of the jury, uh, of, that we're living in, from both, from both the dark and the light that exists within, within the works. As far as art per se is concerned, on the broader context, I can't really say anything much because I feel personally that, um, look, I, I better be careful here again. I've got to be careful what I say. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, yes, I, I, I guess there is room for flippancy and something bright and gay. <laughs> it, brings, it brings life, I think, and sunshine, generally. So, so maybe I'm going to do, in fact, the, the, the last work, well, the work I'm still working on, but is almost resolved, is called, I think I'm calling it um, Ascend Towards Arcadia. Mm, mm. So I think maybe some lovely flowers and <laughs> might be an idea, even just for myself. <laughs> um, in fact, I mentioned to you when, you know, because I've lived in England uh, for brief periods in the last few years, and my, my work when I painted there was very different. Um, you, you remember those pieces, the, the lake paintings. Um, so, so um, although they, they have a certain, but they have a more fairy-like aspect, which is the English countryside. But then of course I have no idea now because I believe that even the UK is, is, is having uh, difficulties. Mm. So I, I don't know, I can't really, uh, Kerry, I can't really answer fully that question. Mm. I think we're all just taking things day by day mm. and keeping safe. I think I think in, to some extent we are we are perhaps all working to finding the answer to that question together, um, and and that's why it's so interesting to hear at least from my perspective where everyone is and how everyone is feeling um, during these times. And I think you know I, I love what your friend said about maybe this is the time where people can can really almost connect with your with your work on on that deeper level. Um, I hope so. Mm. I hope so because. Um, uh, it, when I say, yes, that more can, that, that it can, you know, be, be, be uh, receive a, a, a greater audience and, and through this, me oh, and that's the interesting thing, I knew there was something, <laughs> that the medium of internet, which is never, you know, I'm not a technical person, as you know, to say and so on, but maybe the, the medium of internet and showing artwork through the internet now can in fact be a way to to reach out to a greater larger audience mm. because how many people really go into galleries i mean obviously quite a few are museums and so on 
But less so now. We don't want it. Well, even if they're open, I don't even know how many, you know, whether uh, I think in Europe they have opened up. But um, there's second waves coming and so on and so forth. So it's not. So I, I think that perhaps now the internet or this kind of um, technology could be a way for a, a larger audience to to um, tune in to the, to this kind of work. Yeah. Rochelle, thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure to chat to you. Um, and I'm continually more fascinated by the way that your mind works and, and the way that your expression works. And um, it's such a pleasure and has been such a pleasure. So I will leave my words on that. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to say to the audience or to just say goodbye. Um, but thank you again from our side. Well, thank you, Kerry. And I think I've said enough. <laughs> so I won't bore people any further, but to say uh, thank you and blessings to everybody. Perfect. Bye, Rochelle. Bye-bye.